long time ago and a decade now far, far away, George Lucas gave us one of the greatest franchises ever created, Star Wars. A classic story of good versus evil filled with timeless characters that today remain beloved even after being repeatedly butchered by Disney. Oh, did I forget to mention that Disney now owns Star Wars? Yeah, for the past 10 years, they've had their grubby little mitts all over it. And in those 10 years, they've managed to turn it into a pile of trash. What an incredible smell you've discovered! Before changing hands from Lucas to Disney in 2012, Star Wars had been a thriving franchise for over 30 years, with the foundation of the original trilogy holding up a massively successful expanded universe of stories and characters that included novels, video games, and comics that even today, in these dark times, continue to shine as beacons of actual Star Wars against the darkness of Disney Star Wars. Disney Star Wars revealed their true intentions the moment they threw out the expanded universe in 2014, claiming it was because they needed breathing room for their own trash version. 28 years of solid and actually well-planned content tossed into the bin, which would be then later removed and pillaged for ideas over and over again. Also, Disney could be free to give their spin on beloved characters and plots. Why am I going over this well-tread ground, which you've heard me rant about over and over again already in the past? Because I simply wanted you to remember what it used to be like before Disney decided to pretend that their canon was the only canon in Star Wars. Simply because they spent $4 billion and signed a piece of paper. And because they made that move, everything else that came before it was invalid. Sorry, but no. Disney's treatment of Star Wars and its characters is what is invalid, or should I say, fan fiction, when placed alongside actual Star Wars canon and lore. And that's where we come to today's topic. Disney's lame attempt to once more shove a prequel story down our throats and call it canon has come and gone in the form of Obi-Wan Kenobi on Disney+. Plus a pathetic attempt by Disney to fortify their failing custodianship of Star Wars by desperately trying to link it to the original trilogy in more ways than one. If you ignore the shills, the stands, and Disney Lucasfilm itself and choose to either watch this abomination of a show yourself, or you could go watch my reviews and save yourself some time and actually probably enjoy yourself, you will instantly understand after a few minutes of observation why this show failed on so many upon many levels. But even if you feel like you want to spend that time, which should be spent either watching my reviews or someone else's rather than the show itself, I know you're busy. So allow me today to give you the quick and dirty why this show failed in three easy steps. Characters. The most successful franchises in genre entertainment are timeless because of one major ingredient. Great characters. Unforgettable characters with depth and unique personalities are what propel these stories forward. And Star Wars has been graced with some of the greatest characters in science fiction history. From Han Solo's swagger to shoot first, to Luke Skywalker's boundless hope to see the good in people and strive to save the galaxy through wisdom and not aggression. Star Wars set that bar high, and it was only raised higher and higher with the EU. Obi-Wan Kenobi was no different in his role as the Wise Man Guide, commonly known as the Gandalf Wise Wizard role in fantasy, that was further expanded through stories in the prequel era, aka the Clone Wars, to portray not only his time as an active hero in the Old Republic, but as a mentor, a brother, and a friend to Anakin Skywalker before he fell to becoming Darth Vader. Which of course reminds us that Star Wars gave us one of the greatest villains of all time, Vader. What did Disney do with these two vaunted and beloved characters in this show? Deconstructed and demolished them for the sake of agenda and lame gimmicks. Instead of giving us a true introspective story told through both these men as they push forward with their lives after the Battle of Mustafar, we get a paper-thin portrayal of two men who are constantly either being led around by women of lesser note and importance or being made to look stupid and incompetent because of said women. Don't worry. 
story. We'll get to these self-insert fanfic characters in a moment. In Obi-Wan's case, we were originally presented with him focused on a mission. To not only learn how to commune with Force ghosts, and therefore allow him to become one himself later on, but to watch over and protect Luke from all harm until it was time to train him to become a Jedi. Very simple setup with plenty of room for Obi-Wan to spend his days in private training, but also him trying to stay hidden while learning to cope with his failures as a Jedi, a master, a friend, and a brother to Anakin. I haven't read it personally, but I'm told that by my other EU faithful friends, that Kenobi by John Jackson Miller accomplishes this perfectly without breaking character, canon, or lore. Well, we didn't get that from the Disney Kenobi show. What we got instead was a sad sack of an Obi-Wan, who I lovely call Nobi-Wan, yeah, who has spent 10 years crying in a cave for Qui-Gon Jinn, being a day labor butcher, and watching Luke from afar like a creepy stalker. Well, this is Disney. What do you expect? 10 years of no training, just being a depressed sad man. Until Leia gets kidnapped from Alderaan and he's browbeaten by Bail Organa, who is also destroyed as a character in this as well, into going to rescue her, thus abandoning his own duty to protect Luke because Bail failed in his duty to protect Leia. With that, we're off on a wild and crazy adventure where Obi-Wan will learn life lessons from 10-year-old Leia and other characters of the vaginal persuasion in order to find his Force Mojo again so he can have a lore-breaking duel with Darth Vader on a poorly lit planet of unknown location and importance. Oh, <laughs> and over and over again during this romp across the galaxy to places we don't care about, which I think lasts maybe a few short hours, Obi-Wan never once displays any real courage, leadership, knowledge, or wisdom that he was known for during the Clone Wars and displays later in the original trilogy. In fact, the first time he encounters Vader, runs away like a little bitch. We went from hero to zero, from zero getting a few pep talks from strong women and other fanfic characters to overpowered Super Saiyan Obi-Wan capable of power levels that would have allowed him to take out Palpatine. All of this done in a manner where Obi-Wan is barely the centerpiece of his own show. On the other side of this deconstruction, we have Darth Vader. Once considered menacing, calculating, and ruthless, now he's a moron who wastes both his time and Imperial credits, all to bolster the lame backstory of a fanfic character we call Reva. Be patient, we'll get to her. Vader in this show is transformed from the terrifying Sith Lord who, while ruthless and pitiless in his actions, takes those actions with purpose and not reckless abandon into now a thug who randomly kills people for shock value, breaks character in terms of motivation and stupid decisions that the tactical genius he displays as Anakin Skywalker during the Clone Wars wouldn't have done, and in the end is left a kneeling, quivering mess of a man who was supposed to be someplace between Vader and Anakin. Oh, and his powers seem to have cooldowns akin to an MMO, because sometimes he can't seem to use the same ability he previously displayed seconds before. Gone is the Sith Lord we know and love, replaced by a caricature. That sounds like Vader, makes a few flashy moves like Vader, but in the end is nothing of the sort. This show stripped away the power and authority that should surround Darth Vader, and instead smeared a story on the ground of a man who was nothing but a weakling under a mask. If this show is to be taken seriously, which of course I do not, how can anyone move forward to actual Star Wars and think, man, Vader is so cool and powerful, after watching him be so stupid and ineffectual in this show? Not only has Disney destroyed these two legacy characters, but they did their damnedest to ruin Princess Leia by turning her into a tiny insufferable girl boss in training who is giving life lessons and gifts from fan fiction characters that Disney desperately wants us to recognize as real. But even that pales in comparison to the Reva problem. Even after being presented with the recent revelations that original Obi-Wan Kenobi show screenwriter Stuart Beatty, who had planned an entirely different character past Reva, taking this into account that his slightly more believable idea of Reva buying all the Imperial propaganda that the Jedi were evil and only doing a face turn after Obi-Wan revealed the truth about Order 66 to her, 
She still had no business existing in this show in Star Wars at all because she was created as nothing but an agenda virtue signaling character that was meant to steal Obi-Wan's heroic mojo and moments and put Vader in his place about his obsession with Obi-Wan. That was Beatty's version. The Reva we got instead ran around shouting at people, cutting off hands, was revealed to have killed many Jedi and other Force sensitives, like, also liked to torture a little girl, acted with the knowledge about characters and events she should not have been privy to, all for the chance to try and kill Vader, who knew she was trying to kill him for the past 10 years, who she blamed for killing all her Jedi friends and family, who she then went on to kill more of. Oh, just let that all sink in for a moment. While I remind you, it was all done to place her in a position to have the chance to kill Luke, but then not kill Luke, so that Disney Star Wars canon could forever remind us that Luke Skywalker survived by the grace of Reva, which in the end doesn't matter because all roads lead to Jake Skywalker in Disney Star Wars. <laughs> Character destruction deconstruction, and agenda insertion through new and interesting fanfic characters. That is Disney Star Wars to its core. They do nothing to advance or grow original beloved characters, instead choosing to lay waste to them for the sake of agenda, which takes the form of their new fanfic-inspired self-insertion characters who are all forgettable, poorly designed, and poorly written by a cabal of morons who fail to even understand not only the basic rules of writing Star Wars, but writing characters in general. The failure of storytelling and production. Disney Star Wars fails in character respect and creation, but its weaknesses do not cease there. Disney Star Wars continually hires directors, showrunners, and writers who have no idea what Star Wars truly is, nor do they care. Deborah Chow, the director and showrunner for this mess, is an incompetent twit. First trying to tell us that Darth Vader in this show is not the fully formed Vader from A New Hope, then rolling out nonsense that there is some sort of love story between Obi-Wan and Anakin? Put that aside, and we still have her worthlessness as a director who went to the school of shaky cam, poor lighting, and a lack of attention to detail when it comes to proper choreography and scene changing. Then you have Joby Harold, the head writer for this catastrophe, who revealed willingly he had no knowledge of the prequel trilogy events. Seriously! You were given the task of writing an Obi-Wan and Vader story, and you had no idea that Obi-Wan even knew Anakin was Darth Vader? On top of that, you deliver a string of events with zero stakes because all the characters of note and importance are covered in total, impenetrable plot armor. Nothing of long-lasting note can happen to Obi-Wan, Leia, or Vader, removing all sense of dread, stakes, anything responsible whenever one of these characters is placed into a desperate situation, leaving us to watch as fanfic characters drop one by one. R.I.P. Wade. Where's Wade? And then to add insult to injury, they didn't even use actual Star Wars music until the very end of the show. That's right. The final moments of this atrocity actually had a John Williams score. But not the rest of it. Insulting. This is all built upon the shaky foundation of desperately trying to legitimize this dreck by twisting classic Star Wars quotes to fit their narrative and tie the show to actual Star Wars. You didn't kill Anakin Skywalker. I did. He betrayed and murdered your father. And my friend is truly dead. Goodbye. Darth. I've been waiting for you, Obi-Wan. We meet again at last. The circle is now complete. When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. Only a master of evil, Darth. The final fail 
is that this show never should have existed. The show was destined to fail. Even without my previous two reasons, this final fact alone drives home the point of why Obi-Wan Kenobi is a failure. The bottom line on all of this is that this show should never have even been created. There was no story to tell. No need for any of this to have happened. This entire series was born out of stretching, breaking apart, and perverting lines from Obi-Wan and Vader throughout A New Hope. The entire premise of this show was created at first to get another Obi-Wan and Darth Vader fight onto the screen to draw in as many consumers as possible to Disney+. Plus. There was no story in mind, just another shiny lightsaber duel to fool the low-information masses. A fallacy that the shills in the Disney stands were all ready and willing to push. The existence and failure of this show was then compounded by the fact that we all knew Obi-Wan was going to F off from Tatooine, abandoning his actual mission to protect Luke, which thanks to the genius of Joby Harold and his tardling writer's room, he did actually fail at because Reva had to exist to almost kill Luke. Obi-Wan had one real job, protect Luke Skywalker. As soon as Disney Star Wars chose to flee from that responsibility, all to promote their misguided and agenda-driven desire to make Leia more important than Luke, this show was a failure because it completely lost the entire meaning of Obi-Wan's self-imposed exile. To protect the child that would grow up to save the galaxy in a last hope ditch effort of freedom from the tyranny of the Sith. A child who because was raised with a hopeful outlook on life went on to save his father from darkness that was Darth Vader and allow him to become once more Anakin Skywalker to complete his destiny of returning balance to the Force by stopping Palpatine. Then again, this is Disney Star Wars. They already turned Luke into Jake and erased Anakin's heroic sacrifice all to bring us the bestest ever, Rey, to really defeat Palps once and for all because patriarchy bad. In conclusion, by the end of Obi-Wan, nothing has happened except a massive string of plot holes that only make Disney Star Wars worse. I know, it's a tall order, but they accomplished that. Reva is alive with all the critical knowledge to the biggest plot reveals in the original trilogy. I know, boggles the mind. Thanks to Reva, everyone should know that Bail Organa is connected to Obi-Wan, which means he's already planning to betray the Empire. Why is Bail still alive? Why is Leia still alive? I don't know, because they don't because Bail doesn't die till the new hope and Leia's covered in plot armor forever. Any Imperial slicer worth of damn would have been able to crack and track Obi-Wan's movements during this entire show which would have led anybody back to him and Luke on Tatooine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why doesn't Leia show any intimate connection to Obi-Wan and New Hope? Really? I knew you because my father talked about you as a general in the Clone Wars. Consoling Luke. Where's the emotion? Because thanks to, thanks to this show, she's keeping her secret about their relationship to the grave. Disney, you effing creeps. These are just the glaring plot holes. There are dozens upon dozens more throughout this entire show that don't make a lick of sense and will make you wonder, do these people even watch Star Wars? Well, they don't. Because at the very end, each and every character covered in plot armor is exactly where they should be and exactly where we left most of them at the end of Revenge of the Sith. It's as if the events of this show didn't matter in the slightest. As though it doesn't fit with any part of Star Wars at all. Like it doesn't even matter. That at the end of the day, it's nothing but bad fan fiction written by people who both do not understand Star Wars, but hate that galaxy far, far away that George gifted us with all those years ago. Okay, I'm done. Take it easy, everybody. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you want to get in touch with me, you can reach out to me at therennerd at gmail.com. That email's for channel business only, so I check it on a daily basis. Also, you can find me at the Geeks and Gamers forums under at Roas, and you can find me at Rumble and Odyssey, the Renaissance Nerd. Thank you again. See you next time.